adjustments. AD's going to have to score points in the paint off of Russell Westbrook. Uh, Westbrook missed. Them, you know. <laughs> Let's play a little game, shall we? Who do you want to start, bench, or cut? Uh, you've seen these on Twitter. I know for a fact. I've played a couple of these games myself. <laughs> but this one, I think this one's a bit tough for some of you. I think you'll be surprised at my answer. Now, in today's video, we'll be breaking down Westbrook, the dynamic between him and the Lakers, how he's potentially going to be traded at some point, and why he's just not a good player anymore. And people got to start realizing that, man. I, I see too many people in my timeline saying a bunch of nonsense, and we'll get into that later. But first, we got to talk about the potential trade here that may happen between Westbrook and Kyrie. The Nets would love to get our beautiful charcuterie board and champagne <laughs> for Kyrie Irving, but I think we're headed closer to spam and apple juice, to be honest with you. Um, hey, apple so juice look, is good. The reality... The reality... What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I honestly think something happened to Brian after that Utah moment. I mean, he didn't used to be this weird on ESPN. Now he thinks Kyrie Westbrook trade, he thinks that's going to happen. I think this is eventually going to happen, but I think it's going to be a fight along the way. This would be one of the most underwhelming blockbuster trades if it were to happen because Kyrie Irving absent for half of the season. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. He's the most unreliable player we have here. And Westbrook, well, there's some drama with him. Russell Westbrook and his agent, longtime agent, have parted ways. This is the agent who he's been with basically going back to right when he came out of college. The agent, Fouché, was quite transparent with the media. He said the marketplace is telling the Lakers they must add additional value with Russell in any trade scenario. And even then, such a trade may require Westbrook to immediately move on from the new team via buyout. And pretty much... What happened here was there was irreconcilable differences between the agent and the player. We see this all the time. Now, the agent, he did add more. He suggested that there was no longer full alignment with Westbrook about whether the former MVP should want to remain with the Lakers for the final season of his big contract. And he even says he believes Westbrook's best option was to stay with the Lakers and embrace the starting role that Darvin Ham had for him. And apparently, Westbrook wasn't too much of a fan of this idea. But it does seem like Westbrook, he's starting to get more comfortable with this idea. He wants to be wanted, but look at his actions since the season ended. Uh, at the press conference for Darvin Ham and building a relationship with his new coach. Now we all know of LeBron James when he was in the summer league, it was publicized everywhere because he's LeBron James. But not many people mentioned Westbrook who was there too. And he did a bit more than watch. In fact, in one timeout during the first quarter, he got up and started coaching some of these players as animated as he can be. I went over to Russ and asked him, you coach in Summer League now? And he said, just a little bit. Now the new agent that Westbrook has hired, he's a very big agent in the industry. He's Jeff Swartz from XL Sports, and he's had clients like Blake Griffin, Paul Pierce, Kemba Walker, and apparently Woj used the wrong tag. I mean, come on, bro. Do your job, bro. At this point, bro, Shams is going to eat you alive. At one point, I was asking myself, okay, is there interest for a Westbrook trade? Who would want him? Are there any GMs out there like Stephen A. Smith? But I know he can make a layup. I know the athleticism is there. What I haven't seen is a jump shot. But I'm going to tell Russell Westbrook right now on national television. I'm going to show my support for Russell Westbrook. I'm going to validate it right in front of y'all. Uh-oh. This should be good. <laughs> I'd give up everybody for him with the Knicks. Everybody, okay? Because that that brother right there, L.A. might not be the ideal fit for him. I somewhere but, else. But, but somewhere else where that energy, that fervor, that tenacity, that athleticism, I'd take Russell Westbrook in a Knicks uniform today. And honestly, I can see why some people would want a Westbrook in their team. But obviously, we, we, we just have to see what Darvin Ham says. Specifically on Russ, you know, a lot has been made about his fit with LeBron. And, and we didn't see it a ton last year with, with injuries. But um, how do you see those three working together? How do you see Russ fitting? And um, I guess more, you do see him here, I guess, based on the way you're talking. And obviously, Darvin Ham, he's the new coach. And he just came in, introduced himself. And of course... He said a lot of great things about Russ. Absolutely. I mean, just our running habits. And Russell, don't, don't, don't get it messed up. Russ is one of the best players our league has ever seen. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And there's still a ton left in that tank. I don't know why people tend to try to write him off. 
we'll get into that later in the video but right now we just have to preface this with him saying this i'm gonna approach him like i do every player i've ever encountered we're gonna talk about our running habits with the ball without the ball and again the to the, the team the, the rhythm of the team and and trying to establish a rhythm with lebron russ ad and and again share the load defensively and offensively defensively is where you're going to see us make our biggest leaps and, and bounds and this is him just being a coach man i cannot be bad at this whatsoever i'm thrilled to coach russ yeah they they try to dump on russ right. but i'm like Dude, that was one of the things that got me excited about this job mm -hmm. as well he a as dog. The, yeah, yeah totally he, a dog. he and i've had a great great rapport since i took taking over the job man just text messages phone calls then it's like mm -hmm. and it does seem like they both like each other they both get along with each other very well <laughs> there's something you said recently regarding russell westbrook yes and that you watched the lakers last year you have a game plan for how to utilize it expand on that but some of the things he expects out of Westbrook, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. We got to call these out. Well, it just, you know, in today's game, Russ is known for, you know, his his just huge competitive spirit and, you know, the velocity in which he gets up and down the floor pushing the ball. Oh, boy, this whole he plays 100% every time. Like, come on. The thing I said... You just have to diversify that. You know, not only will he be leading the charge, pushing the brake, but screening and rolling, defending. Like, I have a film put together of him just being a pit bull on defense and pick and rolls against DHOs, you know, chasing guys off pin downs, you know, guarding screeners, guarding in the post. And that's where it's going to start, not only for Russ, but everybody, AD, Brian, we got to get back to playing defense. Um, I think they were either first or second in defense the year they won the championship yes. in 2020. So that's where it starts. That's where you can make your biggest change and your biggest improvement. One problem with that is that that 2020 championship team was a much better team with much better players on defense. And uh, yeah, they don't have that. And Westbrook, uh, I get it. He's in great shape. Russ, in my opinion, man, he's in great shape. He's durable. Uh, and in this system, this four out, one end system, He's going to have a chance to screen and roll and make plays in the half roll. He's going to have a chance to run on the break, slash, get layups. He's going to have a chance to sprint out to the corner, flatten the defense, get corner threes, as well as the things that he already does well in terms of getting the ball and pushing the pace and pushing the tempo. So I'm excited as hell to have Russell Westbrook on our team. And guess what the Lakers want him to become? a corner free partner specialist like pj tucker except this article that i found here i mean it outlines that this is desperation from the lakers there's gonna be places where he can get to if he's slashing to the dunker playing out of the dunker being a playmaker as a screener in the, in the pick and roll um i want him to lead like the, shoot the most corner threes he's ever shot in his career i mean just look at this subtitle i mean this is insane <laughs> westbrook didn't try to hide him <laughs> like when he's out ahead instead of running back to get the ball go ahead let your teammate push it get to the open spots we're gonna break the defense down because of the way that our, our spacing is going to be constructed you're going to be open for corner threes now why do you think he's open that often just as often as my heart is open for ross my queen now nah, i sense the haters coming up right away saying Westbrook shot 45% from the corner last season. Not only that, but at some point he was shooting over 50% from the corner freeze. Oh my gosh. Now, obviously, Westbrook, he shoots uh, most of these shots open <laughs> because uh, he doesn't make them too much. 33% uh, from the left corner. And obviously, this is where he gets his shots up. Uh, the right corner, he makes up 50% of his shots. Let's be honest here. He still shot a 29.8% field goal from deep. That's horrible. Okay, I don't care who you are. That is just not good. Westbrook thought about it. Crowd kind of telling him no, and he missed it. Now, it is starting to look more and more like the Lakers are going to stay with this big free. LeBron signing his extension recently, and Westbrook, AD, and LeBron having a conversation huddled up on the phone, basically saying they're going to work things out, and it's great. Westbrook looking slim during the offseason, dunking, just having fun with the kids. And uh, it seems like he's been uh, liking tweets criticizing the owner of the Lakers. That's, that's interesting. Uh, apparently, he also was caught unliking the tweet. <laughs> that's funny. 
that's very funny but obviously come on man like i'm not gonna be mad at somebody for criticizing the lakers now we gotta talk about stefan marbury's take on this whole situation he has a documentary out so he's doing a promo for it co-produced by kevin durant new york city point god it's an interesting looking doc i might watch it now he had made these statements on the Ryan Rossillo podcast, which we'll get into Ryan later. He has some things to say that I agree with. Now, Stefan, he makes a good point here when he says LeBron and AD, them guys know what Russell Westbrook was before he got here. You can't be that smart of a basketball player and not know who you're getting, who you're going to be playing with, who's making the adjustments. It cannot be blamed on Westbrook. I get it. I get it. This is an interesting point. Look, they should have known better than to pick a guy like Westbrook knowing that he would play like this. Now, I have to disagree when he says this. Who is going to make the adjustment? The best player is supposed to make the adjustments. You got to allow Russell to be able to do what he does if you're saying that you want him to come here because you watch him play. You've seen him play. You've played against him. And that's just couldn't be further from the truth. Westbrook, what differentiates him from LeBron James, because LeBron can do a lot of the things Westbrook does, is that LeBron James wins you games. He wins you titles. Westbrook, uh, not so much, okay? Oh my God, man, it was you, bro. Russell Westbrook, bro. Russell Westbrook, bro. Oh my God, bro. Russell Westbrook, bro. Hold up, bro. Don't think I forgot about the game. Let's get back to it, okay? Who would you start? Who would you bench? Who would you cut? Please tell me in the comments and tell me right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I would start D'Angelo Russell. He's the better offensive player, and he's made strides on the defensive end. I would definitely take him over those two. Simmons would be my bench. Obviously, defensively, he's the better out of the three. And facilitating-wise, he's the best, too. And Westbrook, come on, bro. You know I'm cutting Westbrook. You knew from the get-go I was about to cut this guy, bro. This guy, I would rather take Ben Simmons than take this guy. That 80% or higher. Misses that one. Misses a pair. Robinson the rebound. Westbrook off the glass. Badly misses you hear the groans from the crowd. He's hearing some boos. And I think logically a lot of people would see this and agree with me, okay? A lot of people would say, look, D'Lo starts, bench Simmons. Simmons defensively is great, but offensively he's just not that good. Westbrook is irredeemable. Just absolutely irredeemable in this list. And it's sad to say because, uh, like this comment says, D'Lo is the most well-rounded of the three. Ben Simmons is just an incredible defender, much younger. But Russ, man, he's just inconsistent and he sucks. He sucks. I think people need to say it. Because you see people on this app, on Twitter, saying, oh, the disrespect has gone too far. These guys are obviously going to say that because they love Westbrook so much. I've never seen a player as coddled as Westbrook. Actually, I'm lying. Ben Simmons is more coddled than him. But he's still better than Westbrook. And that's the point. This comment right here saying, even though I don't like him, he's better than both by miles. What do you mean? 2017 Westbrook is one thing to say. He's better than. Okay, we get that. This is not the same Westbrook we're seeing right now. Not only that, but this is not a conducive way to win. Well, you know what we've done? You know what LA has done? They've turned this into the Russell Live Westbrook reality show. And how can people forget just how abysmal he was this season? What is going on, Jay? Like, Stan Van Gundy brought up the fact that if you look at Westbrook's rates and stuff like that. They're the that, same. It's the same dude. But to me, it looks like he forgot how to play basketball. Like, it just it's like a mental <laughs> no. thing. And it really does seem like it is a mental thing. This low lights. I mean, I'm not doing this out of sheer anger or hatred. This is just me being honest. I'm pulling these low lights from YouTube, there's so many of them. It's so easily accessible. And you still got fans defending him saying, well, look at how many points he averages. 22, seven and seven in the last 10 games of the season. He was, what? What does that do for you? What does this do for you if you can't even win 35 games in a season? And now we got Westbrook one player in a month in May of 2021. That just proves our point even more. Um, tell me, what team was he playing for back in 2021? He can only be good when the team lets him do whatever he wants. And maybe he went 40 games uh, at this stage of his career. 40 might be a lot. He has to reinvent himself to play on a winning team. 
See, you want him to go to a team to be the best player and probably be in the play-in. Right. I think he can reinvent himself playing alongside they, LeBron they, James they, and AD. Guys like Jalen Rose, they'll tell you all this and then in the same breath say that Westbrook, I mean, he can reinvent himself in the Lakers uniform. He can change. When we've seen it for years, Westbrook has played the same way all throughout his career, and there's nothing that's going to change his ways. You're going to bring Westbrook back? I already said that you can't, all right? Westbrook is not going to change. And there's nothing, and I mean nothing, that can convince me that he'll change next season. I'm telling you right now. Darvin Ham, everything he said about Westbrook being one of the best players we've ever seen, a great defensive player, we're going to make him a corner three-point shooter. Does he really believe any of the things he's saying? Or is he just butt-kissing? Uh, I think Darvin Ham is saying the things you have to say as a head coach. They're the right things. I don't believe any of them. Palenka saying all the right things, even though he goes to such an absurd level sometimes where he was like, we think Westbrook has the tools to be all defensive player. But like, oh, what are they going to kick in his mid-30s? That's a weird move. And really, do you expect Westbrook to suddenly change because, oh, now there's a new coach? Do you think that's how it works? Do you think his brain is just going to be miraculously programmed to now play defense, be a screen and roller, and be a corner three-point shooter? He doesn't do any of that, and we know that for a fact. He's a terrible defensive player, right? He doesn't set screens. He can't shoot off the dribble, doesn't want to take corner threes, needs the ball to initiate the entire thing. It's a mess, and this is why he's been on this many teams here. Pay attention to this play right here, Westbrook on the left side. Yeah, he just stands there frozen as though he was shot by Dr. Doofenshmirtz's Friesenator. I mean, this is silly. And it's been this way even when he was winning an MVP that year in 2017. It's just that now it's even more glaringly obvious. I got to tell you, it, it, it's crazy over the past five or six years what's happened to this man's legacy from him being that MVP caliber player to now potentially next year going on his fifth team in five years his fifth team if he gets traded from the lakers which he probably will in five years think about that for a second and to circle back on westbrook let's talk about his time in okc because he was a marvel he was a darling he is probably the greatest funder to ever play just like kyle Lowry was the greatest raptor to ever play and although kyle Lowry didn't win an mvp like russell westbrook he does have one thing on him that Westbrook is still searching for, and that's a title. I mean, Kyle Lowry, obviously, we know who's better between Kyle Lowry and Westbrook, but Kyle Lowry, he did initiate the offense like Westbrook, but he let the Rosen and Kawhi play and dominate the ball because they're the better players. Westbrook needs to do that with LeBron and AD. You see DJ Augustine and Russell Westbrook, both of them. Westbrook given space, that's why. What I'm disappointed with Westbrook is, I thought he was going to come with all this energy. For all his faults, Russell Westbrook, if he does change his ways, if Darvin Hemp can instill some of that defensive corner three-point shooting role specialist that he has for Westbrook, he'll be better than Ben Simmons and D'Angelo combined. Westbrook, surveying, pulling, no. Volleyed into the arms of Bridges. And, and, and look, if you're the Lakers, you just got to get back and you got to play the proper defense. They're not getting back. I don't know if he lost his athleticism. Um, maybe he can't explode no more. We got to start seeing that. Where's that aggression? Where's that Westbrook go coast to coast dunking on people? LeBron James is not back yet. Obviously, you know, the stretch and, and Frank Vogel wants to talk it out. This has not been a pretty start to this game. But he's got to find a way to be better. And it's funny to rag on Westbrook. It's hilarious when he has a quadruple double with 10 turnovers in the game. It's just, it's all fun and games. But the Lakers as a whole need to improve. It's not just Westbrook. It's not just up to him. The blame cannot just be thrown on Westbrook's way. And I, I agree with that when people say that. The Lakers need to improve as a whole. Three, it's got an issue now. With two, with one. That's an impossible shot. I ain't playing with you, bro. I ain't playing with you, bro. Russell Westbrook, bro. Can't shoot, bro. I'm sorry, bro. And if you want to know what I mean by this, uh, the Lakers as a whole, I mean, they've had low lights after low lights. And this video here covers it all in a funny way. And I think it's one of my favorite videos ever made. And it's really one of my best works. <laughs> Go ahead and check it out. I'm pretty sure you'd like it. All right, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Can't shoot, bro.